out there in these areas right here, there actually is not any chenit roots. Uh, there's a lot of plants and different vegetation, but the ones that we're after here, particularly for looks and piachi, actually there's a more chavsh out here too, I've seen. There was a lot more probably about three or four weeks ago when we were out here. But they are here now, and um, you're not gonna find them right here, so we're gonna drive further in. Sample of culturally significant plants of the Warren Springs Reservation, Warren Springs, Oregon. Big ups on that, a lot of elders involved. It's got some Indian words and sorts like that. So here's uh, forest plants of the Warren Springs Indian Reservation, which is kind of an older version. This one is Arlita's, Arlita Rune, so. But she let me borrow it, just to look at. Oh, Nick Pachwak, Nashma. Ah, we just am Chikuk. You know, good afternoon, everyone. It's sunny today. We've arrived, Sid Walter. And we're gonna go ahead and get our dig on. Gotta make sure you have the right supplies. Almighty tools back here. The chair, in case you wanna take in the breeze. Just relax for a second. Of course, a good hat for some shade. A nice, sharp cupping, digging stick. So what you do here is when you find the root, maybe it's right there. Just kind of go back about a good three to probably about five inches. And you're just going to kind of push down, push down, push down when you go to dig. And you're going to go ahead and pull it back up. And uh, on <coughs> Piochi, you actually just have to kind of scrape it a little bit to get underneath the roots. And they'll start to come down. There's not too much. Oh, there is going to be some here. They're mostly in the rocks. Um, but with looks, you're going to like find it. And again, you do go about five inches away and start pushing down, and you're gonna need to get down probably about four to five inches. It's pretty deep. All right, so what we're looking for is these with the maroon stems, lahams, and they've got these little tumnas, little seeds at the tips of them. And there's a little one right here, but you don't want to get these ones right here. These are pretty plentiful, but um, those aren't the ones you want to dig. They come out pretty big too, but again, going back to the demonstration earlier, you're going to go about three to four inches away from it, push down as hard as you can. I'm just gonna push back on it. Try to grab it real quick. <laughs> Don't even get it. I'm busted it. We got right here. Still two to three inches back. Cause they got you gotta get kind of deep on these ones. So he's just an itty bitty guy. But nice good long stem. You could definitely keep this whole stem too. It's still pretty good. So you so I always pull it off right where it starts to meet the uh, purple. And you just kind of clip that off and I always put the stems back on the ground because where it's peelings, because it's really good for the earth. So again, that's still easy peeling. So Starting to fill the wapas and then keep on going around and find another one right here. Again, I'm gonna push down pretty hard. If you want to get deep, you don't want to break the break the root like that last one. So be gentle with it. I'm not here to make a bunch of holes. Definitely digging roots is good for the earth too because it allows it to breathe. So this kind of opens it up and now I'll just kind of put them back a little bit. So you take the stem, you can just put it right back in there if you want, and I'll just kind of push it back in, just keep doing that. So, bring out a lot of teachings during this time of gathering roots, because um, back in the old days, there was, there was roles for 
and there still is, but it was a little bit more strict at that time where there's roles for men and women. And so some people say that men uh, can't dig for feast, but they could certainly uh, help to gather for their families. These roots are very valuable and a lot of nutrition and they really kept our people around for a really long time and by drying them they were able to preserve them for seasons at a time and of course being the kind of people that we come from they would uh, also preserve them so that they could give them back to some of the families that really needed them whether for funerals or doings and coming coming of age ceremonies and blessings from the creator in our creation story all these roots they came out and they had their place in time and they stood up before the people who were very pitiful at a time and they began to name themselves and and um, so in that creation story these women who were still becoming of who we are today humans tananma then they uh, they wanted to add a bit of their piece to the creation story because each of us has a capability we're all part of the creation story it's, the story has never ended so these elder women they they had passed and before they had passed they promised on behalf of themselves and to the creator and to the people that they would they would uh, pass on and go back into the ground and that sacred circle but when they came back, they would come back in forms of roots. Because at the time, the animals had already given themselves to the people for clothes and for food and nutrition, and etc. And they too are on the, uh, on the table for our ceremonies. And so when these ladies came back, the first one said that she was going to come back as a root that represented the wholesomeness of our Tananma. And... How important it was to be honest and respectful and true to ourselves, to each other, to our families, to our communities. So she passed on and when she came back, she became this, this look, wholesome, nice and round and near perfect. And so we consumed this chanit and it's placed right after the uinat. With the uh, the meats, the deer and the elk, and after the looks came and presented itself to the people, then then the uh, this other lady came and said that she was going to uh, pass on, and she was going to come back as the piachi, and. And she wanted to be back, uh, come back as a representative of the long life each and every one of us should live and taking care of our, ourselves and each other and, and the long line of gatherers and hunters and providers. And so when she came back, she came as these long roots, which we call piachi, and they're like much longer than than this, this isn't a piaje, but it comes in long strings and lots of long strings, not these ones, but um, and so forth. And then the chaos, when that lady had passed, she said that she would come back as as a root that represented our our emotions, our the place of our being that's uh, affected by spiritual states and. And, um, but that's our emotions, our moods, our happinesses, our sadnesses, and our worries. And so sure enough, when she passed and came back, she came back in the form of a chaosh. And that's why chaosh is very lumpy and, and kind of looks a little deformed at times. But, but it's still true and wholesome and still contributes to our long life. And every root has its creation story.